G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, we are going to have an early crack at predicting next year's ladder at the end of the home and away season. Now, this is always a divisive video. It's super difficult, consistently difficult, and I know I'm gonna alienate some of you, but it, uh, it's still a fun video to do, so uh, I'm gonna try and predict next year's ladder. I always like to do one you know, towards the end of the year predicting next year, and then I usually do one at the start of uh, the following season. Usually after a bit of pre-season, we get a feel for injury situations, and form, uh, certainly from individuals in the preseason. But today, uh, I am going to have a crack at it, and it's uh, quite difficult not to use too much recency bias looking at how the trade period went for each teams and shooting teams unnecessarily up the ladder simply because they had a good trade period because it doesn't really always work that way. So the format for this video is, how we're going to do it first is I'm going to make a tier maker and I'm going to rank teams into different categories based on how likely they are to, you know, make finals or win the spoon or however it may be. Then at the end of the video, I will show you my predicted ladder. Before we start off, guys, if you do me a huge favor, if you are enjoying the content that you're currently watching on this channel, we do a whole variety of AFL content. If you could consider subscribing to the channel, that would be much appreciated. I was sifting through my analytics and a stat told me that 37,000 people who watched a video in the last 28 days came back and watched another video. So I appreciate that, but considering I only have 23,000 subscribers, that means that uh, there's a whole bunch of you who watch the content that haven't hit subscribe. Now, I'll be honest, recently I realized that there is a lot of channels that I watch that I never actually hit subscribe to just because I was being absent-minded. But as a content creator myself, I should know that it actually does help the channel a lot in terms of boosting it in the algorithm, etc. So if you are one of those people who does enjoy the content, if you could subscribe, that would be much appreciated. All right, without further ado, let's crack into this tier maker first this will set the framework for my ladder prediction overall it's not going to look exactly the same as the tier maker but uh, i thought it'd be helpful to at least group teams together so i've got the categories of top contenders outside contenders finals chances outside finals chances and bottom four likely so this is always tricky so um, let's start with, uh, well, obviously we'll start with the top contenders. To be honest, I'll probably have Brisbane and Collingwood alone in this section because they're the only two that I can make a really strong case, at least in my mind, that they're going to be there again next year. I think both teams list demographics, suggest that they will be there again. They're both pretty consistent. Collingwood, again, with the amount of talent they have on the list, equally the Brisbane Lions, who are such a good home and away team. I feel like these guys probably do make the top two. Will they make the grand final again? Not necessarily, but when you look at the prelims and see how Melbourne and Port did out of that top four, I feel like there is a comfortable gap there. So I've got two main top contenders. Let's go bottom four likely and just nudge my team West Coast. And I'm gonna put North Melbourne in here again. Uh, just simply because the gap between those two teams and the third worst team this year, or at least third last team in Hawthorne, was so significant that even if you make a strong case for both teams improving, which I'm expecting and hoping, obviously, for the Eagles, there's still a fair bit of ground to make up to, to not only finish outside the bottom two, but the bottom four. So we'll start there. I think that's a fair framework. Uh, the outside contenders. Okay. So uh, Carlton is one team that comes to mind. I think they've really arrived this year in the way they ended the season and get relatively close to a grand final in the way they did. They won two finals. Their list demographic, I just think they're all primed for a, uh, a genuine premiership assault. So I have them in that group pretty firmly. I'm going to put Sydney back in here as well, a team ravaged by injury uh, and the list talent there is, is significant. So I'd say they're an outside contender, certainly not a top contender, but better than a finals chance. I think they'll improve on last year. Melbourne fall into that category as well. Again, like so many good players in their prime, you have to say they're an outside contender. Port Adelaide also probably, I mean, they, they made the top four and, you know, but for one slip up in 2022 where they missed the finals, they were also top two the previous two years. And so, you know, I think it's fair to categorize them in that and considering so many of their best players are still in their prime. Finals chances, probably the one that steps out to me is Adelaide obviously didn't make the finals this year, but it was kind of a controversial uh, situation there, obviously. They probably should have made finals, um, but I think they're, they're going to be, you know, they're on an upwards incline for sure. So I'd say finals chances as a minimum. Uh, who else have we got here? I'm going to put Geelong in finals chances. I think they, they exceed that of being a, an outside finals chance. I think this year was a bit of a blip on the radar, and I think they've still got so much firepower that you have to consider them at least a good finals chance. I mean, they were a fair way off it this year, to be fair. But a big gap between their best and worst means that if they just improve their worst performances, they will improve. 
I think the, the window of them genuinely being a premiership contender is probably over, but uh, the finals is still quite doable for them. GWS, I'd say finals chances. Maybe you could elevate them into outside contender. For me, I think they're a team that's very likely to play finals. I just think they're a little bit top heavy. Their list isn't quite there for genuine premiership assault, and that's why I don't think they're there quite as an outside contender, even though they beat Port Adelaide. I think they're just kind of a good finals team with a lot of heart, but that's different to putting away a full home and away season. So St. Kilda naturally are a finals chance. I think that is a team that has recruited well, both through the draft and trade period over the last few years. I've been doing my redraft series alongside all the other regular content and the, the youth that they've been adding, you know, adding some outside pace this year as well with Liam Henry, the fact that they came sixth this year, I think it would be disrespectful to say outside finals chance. But again, I don't see the top end talent getting them to being a genuine top end contender either. Hawthorne probably qualify as an outside finals chance. Again, they're just a little bit raw, uh, and they did finish third last, to be fair, as well. You could see them jumping up. You know, they, I think they consolidated their depth well with some off-season moves, but I don't think it's going to be enough for them to really elevate into what should be a competitive top eight. There's some good teams ahead of them. I say outside finals chance, but I see the potential. And I'll apply that logic as well to Fremantle because, again, they fell off a cliff to, to a large extent this year. There is some organic improvement that you'd expect from Fremantle there. I do think losing Lockie Schultz and not really adding anyone of note in the trade period and then trading out of this year's first round draft, um, obviously with Luke Jackson, but then again trading into next year's draft. I just think it's harder to make a case for them making the finals than the teams I have above them. Um, Essendon, would you put this as a finals chance or an outside finals chance? I'd say probably a legitimate finals chance, to be honest. They're probably somewhere between those two groups, to be honest. Yes, they had a good offseason. Did they add anyone of real note? Well, that remains to be seen if Ben Mackay or Xavier Dersma uh, really come on, Jade Gresham. There's potential there, but perhaps I'm being a little bit generous there. It's more out of faith of Brad Scott. I actually think he's a pretty savvy coach. I'm going to put Gold Coast as a finals chance as well under Damien Hardwick. The, the, we're seeing the slow maturation of this group, a very, very talented group, one of the youngest, uh, most talented young lists in the competition. We're waiting for them to explode, and I feel like with Hardwick, the, the potential for that is greater than ever. It's greater than it was with Stewie Jew. You feel like he could optimize that list and get them somewhere close. So I'd say they're a finals chance to a greater extent than Fremantle and Hawthorne. Is that controversial? Perhaps. But I think Gold Coast took a step back, and this could be the year they finally get over it. Who knows? I, I feel like I talk them up all the time. Richmond, I'm going to put bottom four likely. Where is this? There we go. Now, oop, sorry, I had a little technical glitch and it uh, added the Bulldogs and Richmond for me. But I also say the Bulldogs, first of all, are a finals chance, but I'm losing faith in them year by year. And, you know, reviewing their best 22, where's the upside for them right now? Bonds and Pelly's already playing at the top level. I suppose Norton and Ugle Hagen represent genuine upside. But again, I've just lost faith with the Bulldogs. They, they're obviously going to be a chance to play finals but they're genuinely not an outside contender. And Richmond here, I accidentally put them in bottom four likely, but that's pretty much where I see them. Only because, you know, trying to fill out the bottom four is tough. And I think Richmond's list at the moment is a little bit, well, it's in one hell of a transition at the moment. And while the top end is pretty strong, um, you know, Dusty is still a great player. Tom Lynch is still a great player. And the cliff could be coming for someone like a Dusty this year, who knows? But it is top heavy and it's a new coach with a new project this year and I just see them struggling. And so I think they're likely to finish in the bottom four. You could say outside finals chance. I really don't think so, to be honest. I could be wrong. Th that could make me look silly. Okay, so that is the tier maker portion of the video. Now uh, let's track into trying to plot it in order. And it's again, it's gonna be slightly different to what you saw because I'm gonna pick a few roughies. Okay, so my top four. Sorry guys, I'm just gonna pause the video there for one moment to bring you an important message from Druzy's Athlete Academy. Now, as we wrap up the 2023 season, it's time to map out your goals for next season. Now, if you're a young footballer or general athlete, actually, your coach may have highlighted areas for improvement going into next year, such as adding muscle mass, improving your running ability, or enhancing your explosiveness. Now, you probably know where you roughly wanna be by the end of preseason, but you're probably unsure about the most effective way to get there. Now, helpfully, Druzy has three years experience working with elite level footballers. As a result, he's learned and applied strength and conditioning strategies that will help deliver concrete results. Now, these results that you're gonna get go beyond just mere numbers. 
as you know superficial stuff like increasing your bench press or trimming a couple of seconds off your 2km time trial. The methods that you get through the Druzy's Athlete Academy are actually tailored to your specific needs as an athlete. Now beyond these superficial quantifiable gains, the feedback that the athletes at Druzy's Athlete Academy often give are that their training has actually translating in their game going to another level. Some of the feedback has been that people are able to tackle with more force or confidently break away from contests, they're able to kick further and being stronger in marking contests. Now you know where you want to be by the end of pre-season. Druzy has the experience and knowledge and results to get you where you want to be. Now there's a limited time offer through Druzy's Athlete Academy where there are 10 different free one week trials. So essentially all you have to do to express interest in this is go find Drew's Athlete Academy on Instagram and DM him the message free preseason. I'll leave the information of how to contact Drewzy in the description of this video. So these one week trials are fantastic because obviously with no strings attached, you can experience the program risk free. Take action today, start building the foundations for a really strong next season. And if you do end up going through a program for Drewzy's Athlete Academy, remember to use the code TRUE4020 for 20% off. Thanks guys, we'll get back to the video now. Well, I've got the Brisbane Lions claiming their first minor premiership with this particular group, I think. I think the highest they finished is second. Uh, I think they're just such a good, consistent home and away side, and uh, there's going to see some organic improvement for some good young players they've had coming up. I think they'll win enough games to cl uh, claim the minor premiership, and Collingwood will be neck and neck with them. I just think both of those sides don't look like capable of a drop off at the moment. Carlton Sydney round up my top four. I think Carlton have arrived like I talked about. They've got so much firepower at the moment. This is their time. This is the start of a window potentially. I'm, I'm big on them. They've also had pretty bad injuries the last couple of years when you look into the stats. They've actually missed a lot of games through injury so they're still upside there. Likewise Sydney, they've reinforced their depth with some best 22 players, you know, Grundy and um, Taylor Adams to name a couple but we know that they're a strong team underlying what we saw in 2023, which was, you know, a backline that was absolutely decimated. So they'll round up my top four. Then I'll group the next three together. I've got the two South Australian sides. Adelaide, my big bolter at the moment. They're on an exciting trajectory, really exciting young youth. Great team to watch. I actually do like Adelaide, despite what gets said in the comments sometimes. Didn't strengthen so much in the offseason, but there's organic growth there. I suppose the question mark for them is, will Taylor Walker produce another great season this late into his career? I'm not sure. Port Adelaide and GWS are sixth and seventh. Port Adelaide, again, was just a little bit unconvincing to end the year. Um, in the back half of the year, they lost four in a row. And then in finals, they didn't snap out of that and lost two finals, obviously, to Brisbane and GWS. GWS, again, they made a prelim, but again, I, I just think their list is a little bit top heavy to go through a 23 round season and finish top four. So I have those two, I have those three teams. I'm pretty confident about making the finals. Okay, so the next group of teams I've grouped as a group of five, and I agonize over this. It's like splitting hairs, and there's a bit of mediocrity in there, to be honest. Well, sort of. I don't think Melbourne's mediocre, but I've got St. Kilda sneaking into the eight, Melbourne sliding out of the finals, Gold Coast Suns, the Western Bulldogs, and Essendon making up a glut of teams competing for that eighth spot. So let's address the Demons thing first. This is just a gut feel. I think their team is talented enough to win the premiership, hence why I put them as an outside contender. But if I had to pick a roughie, they seem like a team that could slide this year after two lackluster final series. It's more mental what, what we could see Melbourne slide. Not necessarily buying into things about culture or anything like that. I think they just might run out of steam for a year. The long term, they should still have a window that goes past this year. St Kilda sliding into the finals was one I am unsure about, to be honest. Uh, only because, again, they ended the year in a pretty lackluster fashion. But I think they're well coached. I think they've got a good system. And that might just help them accumulate enough wins. And I think they've drafted well. They've got some good young talent on their list that can play roles at the current development level that they're at. It's still a slide from 6th to 8th, um, but I've got St Kilda sliding in. Gold Coast, I feel like we'll have one of those years where Hardwick makes them look amazing for half the season, and then we'll still see some customary bad performances. Maybe next year they explode, but first year under a new coach, I'm not sure if I'm going to bet on that. Uh, the Western Bulldogs, again, I just think that they're sliding a little bit. They're hard to bet on. They could make the finals. They, they, I don't think they could win the premiership at this rate. I think their list transition has probably ebbed the wrong way. You know, Jack McRae, for instance, Bailey Smith, they're not quite the same players they were a few years ago. Could they come back and be? Absolutely. But I'm not going to bet on them making finals, to be honest. They've, uh, they've lost a little bit of my faith. Essendon, again, this is a tough one. Could they make the finals? Yes. Not because I think their you know, off-season 
recruits were so impactful to their best 22 that I think they're going to make finals. I do just respect Brad Scott as a coach that does seem to make his teams competitive. And if he can close the gap between Essendon's best and worst, they are a genuine chance for finals. That being said, Essendon can be notoriously disappointing when they have some expectation on them. So I've got Essendon in 12th, but I could see them as high as 8th. I will highlight as well um, that Essendon have had some pretty bad injuries too. When you look at games lost to injury over the last couple of years, Carlton, Essendon, West Coast were the three names that I kept seeing. So again, there's some upside there, but they just like a little bit of bite for me. Then the next three, I think will cause a a little bit of discontent in the comment section. This is a gross part of the ladder to put teams, Uh, but I've got Geelong, Fremantle and Hawthorne. So we'll try and unpack that. Geelong, I think are genuinely a chance to play finals this year. But it's a little bit unpredictable. I think we saw a massive gap between their best and worst in 2023. And they're going through a bit of a transition. The firepower that still exists in that team is still significant. Like Hawkins, Cameron, Stengel. They have the capacity to really get a hold of teams. You could see them, similar to this year, finish them around this part of the ladder and, and like have a really good percentage. But I don't have the faith that they still have that hunger. And uh, I think we might see them languish a bit. I don't think they're a, a premiership contender. If they finish sixth this year, I'm not going to be shocked, but I don't see them plummeting to the bottom four like other people do. Fremantle and Hawthorne, this was a tricky one. Again, Fremantle, I just think it's going to take a little bit of time. You know, there were some pretty disappointing performances in 23 and equally some very good performances from them. Still young, inconsistent. Can they make finals? I'd say they're an outside chance, hence my tier make. But again, losing Lockie Shules. They've got some organic improvement because it is a young list that is probably on the on the verge of their prime. And I do believe that this is building somewhere, but I just... I can't back them in this year. And Hawthorne, I have just below. Again, another team that's still going to be speculative to make finals only because I think there is still a big gap between their best and worst. At their best, they beat Collingwood. Um, In the final round, they got smashed by Fremantle at the MCG. So I don't have the faith that Hawthorne can stick it together and win 13 to 14 games to make finals. If they finish a fair bit higher than this, I could see it, but I'll be surprised if they make finals. Respectfully, it's just a case that they're a little bit green. And finally, the bottom three. Uh, We'll start with Richmond. I think they'll avoid the bottom two. I don't think they're a real spoon contender, but I also think they're really a long shot to play finals as well because they still have some star power. But, you know, that 20 to 30 part of their list, which is probably going to get tested this year, well, every team's 20 to 30 um, ranking on their list will get tested. I just don't see it with Richmond. And uh, they're still going through a transition. Like I said, a new coach with less expectation. Well, it could go two ways. He could do an Adam Kingsley and revitalize a group and and push on for another couple of years. But equally, you know, if there's less pressure to try and play finals every year, this might be a slow burn. You could see Richmond looking at the draft and going, Probably need some early picks to regenerate this list. Therefore, their focus might be development. I don't see them finishing very high this year. North and West Coast, 17th and 18th. Just give the Eagles a spoon. Like, it's, it's hard to pick between these two sides. I'll make you a balanced approach. I think North Melbourne have more reason to improve organically. They've gone to the draft a lot more um, over the last few years, naturally. Well, they've had early picks for a number of years now. They do have Alistair Clarkson, who is, in theory, going to have a full season as coach. And some genuine genuine talent on that list that I that I believe in. It's just a case of motivating them, optimizing them, developing them well. West Coast, on the other hand, okay, so I would say they were a fair bit worse. Their worst was way worse than North Melbourne's last year. But they probably had more of an injury excuse. And that doesn't excuse some of the terrible performances, don't get me wrong. But statistically, the the amount of injuries and games lost that West Coast copped meant that there was no stability throughout the year. And what I expect to happen is that they just close the gap and don't get annihilated so much. Please, God, no more. That being said, you know, I can make a case for either side improving and getting off the bottom four. I feel pretty confident both of these sides will be bottom two. And I think West Coast earns the spoon favoritism because of how bad they were at times last year. And of course, they won the spoon last year. So there you have it, guys. That is my crack at ranking the 18 teams. Um, Well, you can't can't say I'm biased. You might hate my opinion. You can't say I'm biased. I just picked my team to win back-to-back spoons. So I'm optimistic, though. This is hard. You know, I like there's so many teams here. You can make a case for finishing way higher than you've actually got them. But every year, there's teams that disappoint based on expectations. Someone's got to occupy those 13th, 14th, 15th spots on the ladder. And I could have it wrong. But this is just a little bit of fun. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. Let's try and keep it civil. And as always, I appreciate your support on the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.